new artist trying to get themselves heard amidst so much traffic has never been more challenging. I think it's about creating a, a brand for yourself as an artist. It's like, who are you? It's kind of what I was talking about earlier. It's like, who are you and what do you stand for? And then creating content around that that's going to target the audience that also believes what you believe. I think, I mean, streaming services are global and really when you're a new band starting from the ground, you need to start locally and, you know, first of all, write great songs, perfect your writing, perfect, perfect your performances and go out and play live and, and build a fan base locally. And I've seen this recently with a band that I'm friends with who are now starting to get a lot of traction on Radio One and they're starting to get impressive streaming numbers, but they really spent two or three years first building it locally in the town that they're from and get, gathering momentum and really an excitement for them locally. And I think that's kind of still the way that it has to be done. You can't just upload your stuff to Spotify and be a superstar the next day, most of the time. Well, it's not, it's not only the 40,000 tracks that are being added per day, it's also the whole of recorded history that your band or artist or producer is, is up against. And that means, I mean, you can upload it to a, a DSP, a digital service provider, and hope for the best, but it's probably not going to do much unless you've got a real way of engaging your fans, whether that's um, social media, which is so ridiculously crucial like that's how you can stand out you know c actually connecting with the people that are like you because when you write a song surely at some point you picture in your head about who's in the front front row those are the people you need to go out and find and play your music to them and then they will spread it for you which will then in turn start spiking your like dsps and then people you know at, at, at spotify and apple and stuff look at those engagements and when something's spiking up that means that they're like going, okay, something's happening here in real life, so we're going to jump on it and we're going to put it on a playlist. The task of a new artist trying to get themselves heard amidst so much traffic has never been more challenging. Um, the positive spin on that, I suppose, is that those that do crack through must be you know, really worth their salt. I don't think an artist can do it without a combination of extraordinary talent, an awful lot of industry, and some great co connectivity. I think I think that it is still possible. The, st the, the mathematics are stacked against the new artist, but the need to make connections with alliances, be that a manager, a label, a lawyer, a live agent, those things never go away. And those associations are more likely to happen if the artist is both talented and communicative and industrious. They have to market their work and 98% of what's on Spotify never gets listened to. So you automatically have to understand nobody cares, so you have to make them care. So how, do you, how does any product get out? It has to be marketed. So, um, and if that's Spotify or Facebook advertising or whatever, you, it's, you come up with a system to get people to hear your music. That's the, most, that's the first thing, music first. And then, and, but what you do, and then you start to say, how much does that cost? How much, what's the customer acquisition cost? Say, okay, it cost me $5 to get a fan. Fine. So if, if you spend $5 on that fan to get them to become your fan, and then you can sell them a shirt or, or you know, enough Spotify plays, which is probably impossible, but um, you get them to buy something or pay for a, a ticket at your show for $6, you've made $1 on that fan. So you, then you just you multiply that out and you figure out how many fans you need and you market your music.